Hi guys, I hope you're all having an awesome day. Today I wanted to share my most used bags of 2019. I always like to do these videos because I like to look back to see which bags I used the most and gave a little bit more love to. And sometimes they surprise me, other times not so much. Because you guys know that when I really like something, I like to shout it from the rooftops. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get started, shall we? All right, so I have a total of eight bags. They're kind of spread out all over the place. So if I seem a little disorganized, it's because I am. And I feel like it's been a hundred years since I filmed, so just bear with me. All right, so the first one that I want to share with you is the Louis Vuitton Alma BB in the Damia Ben. I absolutely love this bag. I do have a slight love-hate relationship with it. Definitely more love than hate, and I will get into that in just a second. But the reason why I use this bag so much this past year is because I really found myself uh, going for smaller handbags. Even though I am very much a tote girl, totes are what I prefer. I found myself really gravitating to towards those smaller ones. And with the Alma BB, even though it is small, it still packs a punch. I mean, it might look like it might not fit too much, but trust me when I say this, you can definitely fit all of your daily essentials. Of course, you can't get away with, you know, full-size small leather goods, such as a full-size toiletry and a full-size wallet that would fit comfortably in here. Definitely not. You have to go for those smaller, more compact small leather goods, and then everything fits in perfectly. But I absolutely love this. And another reason why I use this bag so much is because we had really unpredictable weather this year, uh, this past year. We had a lot of rain and because of the Damia Ben, I don't have to think twice about it. I don't have to think about, you know, water stains. I don't have to think about anything like that, you know? Plus, Damia Ben is my all-time favorite print. So that definitely, uh, that definitely helps uh, the love. Plus the fact that it has that gorgeous, beautiful red interior always gets me. Um, but the reason why I have that slight hate relationship with it is because it does have a, um, it does come with a removable uh, shoulder strap, but that shoulder strap isn't adjustable, so you can't really play around with it too much. At least I can't, you know what I mean? Sometimes I try to put it on crossbody and it does fit comfortably crossbody, but other times I wish it would have had maybe a little bit more give, you know? But other than that, I, I still love this bag and it made my most used bags of 2019. All right, moving on to the next one, which is the Louis Vuitton bum bag. Now, funny thing is, is that never in a million years, never in a million years would I ever think that a bum bag would be one of my most used bags of 2019. Never in a million years would I think that a bum bag would be one of my favorite handbags of all time. And here we are. You know, I've said it before, I eat my words. I will eat my words every single time. And like I said in the reveal video of this, never say never. Because there's many times where, you know, um, I, of course I can't speak for anybody else, but when I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh my gosh, no, no, I will never, I will never, I will never. And then the bag starts to grow on me and it just turns into a completely different thing, you know? And once I have it in my collection, it ends up being better than I ever anticipated. And this is exactly how that was. This is kind of like the Speedy 25 Bandolier. You guys know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, I swore up and down that that bag would never be in my collection. And again, here we are, you know? So never say never. But this bag, um, I believe I got it a little bit towards the middle part of last year. And even even though I didn't get it at the beginning of last year, I, I have used this bag to death. And the funny thing is, is that sometimes when I sit here and I'm just like, okay, what bag do I wanna reach for? My eyes automatically go towards this bag. I don't use it as a fanny pack, as I've said in other videos. I definitely prefer to use it on my shoulder. It's crazy, crazy comfortable. It doesn't roll off of my shoulder or anything like that, especially because it already has quite a bit of wear on the strap, um, has quite a bit of wrinkles. And the more and more that I use it, the more it starts to just mold onto my shoulder. And it's just like easy grab and go type of thing, you know? And um, I can't end up fitting everything and the kitchen sink in here. I definitely have to go more compact than uh, than other handbags, but it still fits all of the essentials that I need, you know? And I did end up going for an organizer. I talked about it in, um, in another video. I did end up going for an organizer and the organizer has been a major, major game changer. It really helps me to find my items a little bit easier and I don't find that my items end up, you know, like flying out off the sides, kind of like what I mentioned previously. But the reason why I ended up using this bag so much is because I was really on the go a lot this past year. And like I said, this one was just easy grab and go, easy grab and go, don't think about it. And it's just, it's absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. So, 
Like I've said, never say never. Never say never because then you could be eating your words one letter at a time like I do. <laughs> but anyways, the Louis Vuitton bum bag. Moving on to number three. Now this bag made me crazy happy because for the most part, you guys know that I always end up going for black handbags, um, either black handbags or monogram. And I sincerely thought that my collection would consist of black handbags and monogram bags, you know, until the foreseeable future, especially because I didn't have the best experiences with colored handbags in the past. But this baby, I used it to death last year, and it's it's really made me appreciate being able to come out of my comfort zone and try something else out and give it a second chance. And I'm talking about the Chanel Mini in the red caviar leather with the silver hardware, although it's not necessarily red because it's more raspberry. Let's be honest, it's more raspberry. It depends on what, what kind of lighting I have because on camera it's showing up a little bit more red, but in real life it's... It's definitely raspberry, yeah. <laughs> it has a perfect balance of red and uh, and pink. But anyways, this bag, uh, like I said earlier, I started gravitating a lot towards smaller handbags and I absolutely love the Chanel Minis. They are small, they pack a punch, they end up fitting all of my daily essentials. And I really like how I'm able to use this as a crossbody bag. It has a very generous strap. Uh, or if I wanted to just put it on my shoulder, I have that option as well. But I just think that these are super, super cute. Um, I have definitely gotten an obsession with minis, if you will. And this is another bag that I didn't think, you know, five years ago that I would ever have in my collection, ever, as far as the size goes, you know, because I was always, you know, uh, all about just wallet on chains, wallet on chains. Uh, but the minis have definitely, um, you know, been some of my most used bags and especially this red one. And because it is a caviar leather, it is a little bit more carefree. And I haven't had any issues with color transfer. I've used it with dark denim. I've used it with my darker tops and I haven't had any problems with it thus far. Of course, if that changes, I will definitely let you know. But uh, usually with color transfer, you end up getting it on the corners here, but nothing so far. So like I said, I really ended up getting out of my comfort zone, going more for colored handbags. And there would be days when I'm just like, you know what, I wanna go for color. I wanna go for a pop of color. I don't want the pop of color to be inside of my bag. And this is the one that I would uh, I would end up going towards. And it was a close call between this one and the mini and the Barbie pink and the lambskin. But this one definitely ended up, I ended up using a lot more. So yes, the Chanel mini and the red caviar with the silver hardware. Let's just call it raspberry caviar leather, shall we? Um, all right, next up, this is definitely not a surprise because this bag has made my top bag every single year, year after year. Um, and that is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the monogram canvas. I've said it before and I will say it again, I am hands down a tote girl. I know that this video might seem like I'm going in another direction, but totes, are what make me the happiest. I love being able to fit everything I absolutely need and then some. And when it comes to the Neverfull, it is so lightweight. I love the fact that it still keeps its structure. And this is another bag that it was one of those grab and go, don't have to think about it type of things, you know? And um, it's just, it's perfect. It's the perfect size for me. And it's incredibly generous. Sorry. <laughs> It's incredibly generous. So, I mean, I will always be a diehard fan of the Neverfull. Uh, a couple of years back, my most used Neverfull was my Damien Azor, and I still love that bag, but last year I noticed that I ended up using the Monogram Canvas a lot more than the Damien Azor. Um, but still, I think it's great. And for as long as I've had this bag, I can never I can never remember how long I've had it, but I've had it for what seems like 100 years. Um, I think it still looks pretty good, you know? And I don't use anything, as you guys know, to, to put on the leather or anything like that. I like the oils in my hands do all the work and it's still in fabulous, fabulous condition. So, you know, I know some people aren't a fan of it, you know, to each their own, but this will always be my number one tote of all time, at least as of right now, <laughs> as of right now, right? Because I don't have, uh, I don't have other, uh, I mean, I have other totes, but not a different type of tote. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> Anyways, I'm rambling. See what I mean? This is what happens when I'm not on here for a while. I just start talking, I just start blabbing about nonsense. <laughs> All right, next up is the Chanel Reissue 226 in the black aged calfskin leather and the aged gold hardware. What can I say? 
I absolutely love this bag and it's been one of the best additions to my collection and the reason why I gravitated so much towards it last year is because I love the size that it has. It's right in between a classic flap as far as a jumbo and a medium large, but the fact that it does have the aged calfskin, you have a little bit more give. It's not as stiff. Plus, because of the aged calfskin, it's a lot more lightweight. And with classic flaps, I love them as well, but they're heavy on their own, and then when, once you start to add your items inside, it gets even heavier, you know? And with this one, it doesn't feel like it's digging into my skin or anything like that. It is crazy crazy, crazy comfortable, you know, and I love that about it. I got caught in the rain a couple of times with it and I haven't had any issues with water stains. I didn't get any water stains whatsoever. Um, I just ended up patting it down. I let it sit there and there are no stains on it. I haven't had any issues with the, with the hardware as far as chipping because initially I thought that, okay, I know that the aged calves or the aged hardware might end up wearing as time goes by especially if it's a bag that I use uh, all the time. And so far, I don't have any, you know, silver peeking through or anything like that. I haven't had any problems with the corners wearing, you know, funky. So this bag has definitely exceeded my expectations. And like I said, the fact that it is so, so comfortable, it has a little bit more give, allows me to fit all of my essentials plus, uh, and then some, really made it a bag that I would constantly gravitate towards. This one is definitely giving my medium classic flap a run for its money. And I think that this one just might come out on top. I never thought I'd say that either. This video is full of nevers. Let's count them out. Let's see how many times I say never. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this is an amazing, amazing bag. And I'm so happy that I was able to add it to my collection. And I'm so happy that it's been one of the best purchases of all time and one of my most used bags of 2019. So there we go, the Chanel reissue. All right, moving on to the Louis Vuitton Palm Springs mini backpack. Uh, and like I said earlier, this year I ended up gravitating a lot towards smaller handbags and we did have unpredictable weather. So this one was like the best of both worlds. And the fact that this bag also has quite a bit of versatility with the, um, hang on, let me take this out. See, so unprepared, so unprepared. Uh, the fact that it does come with uh, these straps that you can either use crossbody on your shoulder, you can use it as a backpack, as the name states. I feel like the possibilities are endless when it comes to this uh, to this bag. But the fact that it does have that carefree leather, I don't have to worry about getting caught in the rain. And this bag, I really ended up using the most when it would rain because I don't know. And I also found myself taking a ton of pictures when. When, um, whenever it's raining, I always like to take pictures with the bag that I'm using. Some people cringe so badly on Instagram. They're like, no, why would you do that? Why would you do that? But for me, it makes me happy because I mean, the bag makes it so carefree, you know? So the fact that I can take a picture in the rain, because you guys know I'm obsessed with the rain and enjoy a handbag while doing it. Yeah. Absolutely, I'm definitely gonna do it. So this bag definitely made a quite a bit of appearances when it came to rain here in Southern California, but um, I think it's great, you know, and I still have that love-hate relationship again you know, because of the zipper, it can be somewhat fussy. And I'm so, so happy that Louis Vuitton decided to change up the zipper so it makes it a lot more user-friendly. Um, I've had some people ask if I'm going to exchange this for the new one, definitely not. Um, so far, so good. This one's wearing uh, the way that it should. I haven't had any problems with like wear and tear, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm crazy about it. It's, it's small, versatile, it's carefree, it's monogram, I mean, I feel like this bag has a whole lot of pros going on. You know what I'm saying? So I'm a big, big fan of the Palm Springs mini backpack. And this is just food for thought. But if Louis Vuitton ever decided to make the Palm Springs mini backpack in Damia Ben, dude, I would, I would lose my mind. <laughs> I would be all over that. Can you imagine? And still have that beautiful red interior. How amazing would that be? But they definitely have to do something about the Damien Ben leather, because I, I don't think I'd be able to handle the straps because they're so thin. I feel like they might end up digging into your shoulder. But anyway, here we go again. Here I go again. I am rambling about something that doesn't even exist. 
someone help me, <laughs> someone help me. But anyways, uh, number six, the Palm Springs mini backpack in the monogram canvas. Um, all right, next is the Chanel medium classic flap in the black caviar leather with the silver hardware. This has also been one of my most used bags every year, year after year. And this is the one that I was saying that the reissue is giving them a run for its money. Uh, here they are side by side. And I am just, this bag, not only do I love it because of how I in, end up incorporating it into my, into my lifestyle, but it also has a lot of sentimental value. So this is one of the bags that I will never, ever get rid of. I've said it before. This is a forever bag as is the reissue, but the reason why I used it so much last year is because I love the size. I love the size medium. It is a little bit, um, I mean, you have to be a little bit more mindful as far as uh, how many small leather goods you fit in here because it can get quite crammed and it can feel a little bit heavier. So I always go for more compact small leather goods, but I'm still able to carry all of my, my daily essentials with ease, you know, and this bag is very comfortable on my shoulder. It doesn't dig into my skin. Um, I will have to say that one of the things that isn't the best feature for myself as far as my body frame is the fact that I can't really get away with using this bag as a crossbody bag because when I put it on crossbody, I feel like I am just like because of my chest, all right, we've talked about this before. <laughs> when I put it on my chest, it's like, it feels like it's so crammed and I look so awkward. So I can't, I can't really pull it off that way. Sometimes, you know, if need be, if, if I need to be hands-free, I'll do it. But I don't really like using it that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, but still, I love this bag. The fact that it is black. I don't, I mean, it goes with my entire wardrobe and classic flaps to me are not the types of bags that you have to be dressed to the nines. This is also something that I've talked about in other videos. You know me, I'm a very, very, very casual dresser and I like to be able to pair this up with sneakers. It makes me crazy happy to do that. I know some people aren't a fan to each their own, but I like being able to incorporate it into my lifestyle that way, you know? And when I do wear it with a t-shirt and jeans, I think that it gives it a completely different look, you know? And when I want to transition into, um, you know, a dress for evening, I have that option as well. So the fact that this is very easy to dress up and dress down makes it a bag that I always end up gravitating towards. And the silver hardware, you know, and I talked about this on a post on Instagram a couple of days ago, and I know I'm making it a little bit longer, but silver hardware, I've always been a diehard fan of black caviar leather and gold hardware or a black bag with gold hardware. That's always, always, always been my jam. I love the way that it looks. Um, but when it comes to silver, I started to get a new appreciation for silver. I've always liked silver, but now I'm just kind of like, huh, maybe I want to go for a black bag with silver hardware moving forward, you know? So Again, you just never know, um, you know, what how your taste is going to change as the years go by or as the months go by. But the silver, I definitely feel that it gives it a little bit more of a casual vibe. And I say that very, very loosely, but it definitely, as far as my wardrobe, it gives it a little bit more, a little bit more, just a tad more of a casual vibe than the gold hardware. So the fact that it is so carefree, I mean, I compare it with my entire wardrobe and the beautiful silver hardware and the fact that it still fits all of my essentials are definitely some of the reasons why I gravitated towards this bag. Um, you know, and of course the fact that it does have so much sentimental value to me, every time that I use it, it just automatically makes me think of when that bag came to be in my collection, you know? All right, last but not least. Now this bag might surprise some of you guys, it definitely surprised me the most. And the reason why it surprised me is because before I acquired it, I honestly thought that I would own it for maybe a couple of months and then turn around, sell it and get something else. Well, that hasn't been the case. It hasn't been the case. And it's, it's crazy for me to think that this type of bag, this type of silhouette would be not only one of my most used bags of 2019, one of my best purchases of 2019, but one of my best purchases of all time. And I, I mean, I think it is absolutely incredible. And I am talking about the Fendi Mama Baguette. I mean, I think that this bag is amazing. It is just fabulous, fabulous, you know? And the reason why I gravitated towards it so much is because it's kind of like something that I mentioned with the other ones within this video. It's an easy, easy grab and go type of bag. I've been caught in the rain with this, no issues whatsoever. Um, you know, of course I've used it in the sun. I haven't had any issues with it fading. I haven't had any issues, you know, with the, with the fabric curling up or anything like that. And 
The craziest thing to me is that you guys know I end up going for structured handbags. That's really what I end up uh, going towards. You know, I like, I mean, I can always appreciate hobos. I can always appreciate, you know, bags that don't have a whole lot of structure, but when push comes to shove, I always want a structured handbag. This doesn't have, I mean, the greatest structure in the world, but it still stays in the upright position where it's completely empty, kind of like this and I'm able to fit everything that I need in there and it's just so easy for me to just throw it over my shoulder and I'm out the door, you know what I mean? It doesn't dig into my skin, it doesn't roll off of my shoulder. I love the fact that it does have the adjustments on the strap there and I do have it on the longest one. I really like it on the longest one because it, it gives me a little bit more give as far as it's not necessarily like too close up to my, uh, you know, to underneath my arm, but it's just, I don't know, I don't even know if I can properly put it into words how, I mean, how easy this bag is for me to use, you know? And I do think it does have a generous opening and I'm able to, like I said before, be able to fit all of my daily essentials in there. I did make the mistake of using uh, dark small leather goods for quite some time and it, it did make it a little bit harder to find just because it does have uh, a dark interior, but other than that, I end up adding a lot more pops of color so I can find my items easier. But even with that said, it's still, it's, I, I mean, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. And the fact that it still stays in the upright position when it's empty makes me happy. It doesn't, you know, turn into a beautiful mess or anything like that. And I just really like the silhouette. I really like the shape that it has and the fact that it is an older bag and it still looks great, at least in my opinion. I think is wonderful. And again, we go back to the silver hardware. So like I said previously, this is one of those bags that when I would sit here and I'm like, well, you know, I kind of used, uh, I used Monogram the other day. I used a Chanel bag. I want to go for something different. I would always, always, always end up going for this bag, you know, and uh, whether I was wearing a jacket, a pea coat, or if I had just a t-shirt on, it was always, always comfortable to put on my shoulder and just you know, head out the door and not think twice about it. So it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy to me, you know, because I honestly thought that this bag would be with me maybe six months tops. And then I'd be like, oh, see you later. It was fun. But that hasn't been the case. Is it a forever bag? Not necessarily. I mean, I'm not going to go that far, but it's definitely, definitely a major, major, major favorite. But yeah, the Fendi Mama Baguettes. Um, all right, you guys. So that does it for my most used bags of 2019. I hope that you enjoyed it. And let me know, did any of these surprise you? What were some of your most used bags of 2019? Let us know in the comment section down below. But again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.